Howdy folks, Kerbo here. Welcome back to Wasteland Survival on Pertam. You're looking at a rover. If you look closely, you'll notice it's the size of my ore processing plant. It's a big one. <laughs> I've been hard at work uh, creating the mobile base and we're about ready to head down to the Great Divide and start working on a bridge. So let's zoom in here a bit. So this is the design I came up with. I'm not a a very good designer when it comes to awesome looking stuff. I mostly go for functional. Uh, eight wheel, two large cargoes. We'll take a tour of the inside. It does have one drill on the back here. Ooh, easy camera. Uh, so I can gather ice and organics to help power it. We've got some solar power on the roof. It's kind of an emergency. And that's on the piston so it can raise up and tilt as needed. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Top back in the main area here. I've just got one screen. I'm planning on putting probably some more screens up here with more info. But got Izzy Ship Refueler running. It's taking care of business. So this is pretty bare. I may have some more Gizwax and decoration in here. But it's good enough for now. Come back here into the, the main area. Shut the door behind us. Here we have pretty much all of our production and engineering life support. Pretty much everything's right here in the middle. It's just a big giant box full of stuff. We've got a medical room here. A refinery with three of four modules complete. I ran out of gold, but there's some gold down uh, close to where we got the silver. So we can get that finished up once we get down there. Over on this side of this main column, we've got the... Uh, all the daily needs stuff, food sequencer, water recycler, and hydroponics. So that's going to keep us fed. An ore detector tucked up in there. Oxygen tank, which I believe is full. Does the blue mean it's full? Yeah, it's full. So I've got an air vent up top that just pulls in outside the air, stocks that, and we use that to pressurize, just like I do my regular base. There's the other side of the refinery. Got a couple large cargo containers in here. Kind of overkill, but I didn't want to run out of cargo space. And then on each side, we've got a large hydrogen tank. See, we got one of those on each side. And those are about 4% full, 4.6%. This one the same, yeah. So nowhere close to full, but we've got quite a bit of hydrogen. Got a hydrogen engine there. It's more of our backup power. Up here, we've got two of the uh, O2 H2 generators. We've got four batteries, two on each side here. Seems to be plenty of power. A little gyro tucked away up in there. And then hiding underneath these uh, speed modules are two assemblers. I had to stop and think which modules I put on there. So there's assembler one, assembler two. And that's pretty much it. That's the, that's the heart of the ship. Now as we move into the next room, this is the hangar bay, and this is where the uh, the little scout rover is stored. I didn't realize I left its lights on. So I've got hangar doors in the floor, and those are a mod. They're, I think, four blocks tall, so I can make it fit. And I've just got a piston with a connector so we can lower that down through the floor and bring it up inside. We'll get the lights turned off. Uh oh. I got some I got some other lights hooked up. <laughs> oh, it dropped me out in a weird spot. Alright, I'll fix that. I've got my some of my lights I got screwed with the uh with the mothership. Come on, jump out of here. There you go. So this is just just a big hangar bay. There's nothing in here really exciting. And then we've got the uh, the back of the ship. We let all our air out. But that's the conveyor over to the drill. We've got a connector on the back. I had at one point hooked this up to a temporary connection off over that way to get a whole bunch of iron and silicon and nickel into here. And I did some experimenting. At first, I loaded it all the way up with iron. Uh, and, oh man, what did it weigh? like 7,000 tons or something like that. It was, yeah, it was stupid. I could barely move. 
but I've got it pared down to, I think, where we can get out of the canyon. I did a test run. I was able to get out of here barely. And I think uh, I ended up bringing like maybe 50,000 iron and then smaller bits of silicon and nickel. It's just, it's just too heavy. Even the way it is now, it's like a thousand tons. It's a big ship. So we've got a ladder here. I need to get some buttons made up and I'll show you why. Get over here off the ladder. Come down here. So the suspension right now is at full height and I just went down the stairs. The suspension is at full height. So I wanted to be able to get on uh, these buttons are for the hanger. I wonder if I had to hook up. Let's just hook up that rotor while we're at it. Let's just throw a reverse on there. There we go. So this gives us more ground clearance. I can actually retract that ladder. We do stick out the back, but it, it gets the ground clearance back. So I'm hoping that will work out. We've still got this stuff that's kind of vulnerable, but it's cheap to replace if we end up knocking it off. Not a huge deal. But that's what I came up with for now so I can actually get back on the ship. It seems to work out pretty well. And the other buttons are so I can open the hangar doors and lower the rover. See that tucks right up in there just nicely, just right under the uh, stairway and the catwalks. Fits beautifully. So that's our uh, ship. We're just about ready to go. The last couple videos were pretty long, so I'm going to make this one kind of a short one to kind of balance that out. You know, some people like short videos, some people like long videos. So let's take a tour of the outside here. I've got catwalk all the way around. So we can get back here to the back. Then uh, I've got a little bit of painting still left to do to places I couldn't quite reach. I went with kind of a deserty color so it'll blend in, sort of. So we can go up over the hydrogen tanks and I can get up here on the roof as needed. And then here I can just hop up. So that's the air vent input. I've got a gun front and back. Just for a little bit of defense. The antenna there, still unpainted. And then I don't know what I'm, I might do something up here at some point. Got some room. Stuck a ladder here, mostly for looks. And then each side we can get back. Oops, wrong button. And then I've also got a ladder off each side here, just in case. This just gives us access to that. I don't want to paint that because that's the inside of the uh, cockpit room. So I kind of went right by the computers. I've got four computers up here, programmable blocks. Got driver assist, and then I've got the Izzy ship refueler. And I've got a couple spares. Probably one of these will, will be running uh, Izzy's solar alignment at some point. I need to get that set up because I can't run that script if the solar panels are retracted. They're on a piston that goes up. Similar access on this side. We've got a ladder. I can go up over the hydrogen tank. You get these lights straightened out. Roof access. And I can come back here to the drill. I might at some point add some interior turrets to the side. I'm not sure. I guess it depends on how much defense we have to do. But uh, this isn't meant to like attack anything. This is literally just a mobile-based to go down to the Great Divide and build a bridge. Might also get some sensors hooked up on those doors. Let me go see. I think I must have... Must have grabbed some of the wrong lights here.
Yeah, I'm not sure why those were changing with the rover. Maybe the rover group is messed up. I'll fix that later. But, uh, so let me turn these signals up. You notice this number is changing. I think a mod updated. I've got cargo ships now that go over. There are several different varieties of cargo ships. Uh, they're not the you know the drones that were kicking the crap out of me. It's just uh, from the air traffic mod. There'll be cargo ships going over occasionally, and I don't think they attack unless they get close enough. And I think maybe that margin is like a kilometer and a half. I'm not sure. I had one that came within just a little over two kilometers and it didn't bother me. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Space pirates, though, are going ham with the outposts. <laughs> they are everywhere. So we'll just have to keep an eye out as we travel down. But that's the plan for today. We're going to try to uh, get up out of the canyon and uh, travel, start traveling down towards the Great Divide. I've got a whole bunch of scrap on me, don't I? So if we look at ingots here, 46 and a half thousand. I've been using a little bit building stuff. 20,000 nickel, 40,000 silicon. Might want to grab a little more iron before we head out. Although, looking at the total weight since I've added some stuff, I don't know if we can get out of here. Probably be a struggle. Put the scrap put in here. So, I do have the daily need stuff hooked up to the uh, cargo, but I've got the water recycler set to not use the conveyor system because I don't want it blowing through all my ice and turning it into water. So I'd manually put ice in there to make water. I mean, we've got 142 in there, plus this has pulled a ton of water into it, the hydroponics farm. So we're good on water. And if we look, I pulled some extra food in, I thought. Didn't. Interesting. Where'd all my food go? Well, let's take a look at the food resequencer. Thought I had it set to make stuff. Shoot up here, hydroponics. Are you making anything? You're on. It says you're hundred percent productive. I'm not sure I believe that. I don't remember what it actually uses. I don't think it uses organics. Let's just use gravel and water. Well, I'll keep an eye on that. Perhaps it's making it as fast as the uh, producer is using it up. So if we go look at the synthesis, no, food, what's it called? Resequencer. not making anything. Well, I'll get that figured out. The uh, hydroponics, for whatever reason, isn't doing anything. Daily needs does seem to be a little buggy sometimes. Anywho, I think we have enough iron to at least get a good start on the bridge. Um, I may want to establish a mine down there or have the ore trucks running back and forth bringing me metal the uh, remote transport trucks that I've made speaking of remote transport trucks I haven't been able to get them to line up correctly they can drive back and forth 
between the mine and the ore processing. No problem. That's easy. Works great. What I can't get them to do is consistently stop underneath the connector. So I'm going to keep experimenting. So I believe I need to get a screen so I can see what Daz. No, Daz is in shutdown mode. I thought I had it already in shutdown mode. All right. As suspected, the uh, I had to put a keyword in the custom data on the connector back in there in the hangar where the rover's docked because it was thinking, oh, I'm docked. I'll just shut down everything. So you put Daz ignore in the custom data on that connector. And when the rover's connected, it doesn't completely ignore everything. So I think we're ready to head out. Uh, you can see we're just over a thousand tons, which is kind of crazy. And we're going to try to get up out of the canyon, which is a little bit of a trick. A little bit of a challenge to get a thousand tons up out of here. But we're going to give it a whirl. Also, I had to go set the... I forgot to set the rover batteries to recharge when I docked. So it sucked every last ounce of energy out of the rover. It was completely dead. I set that back to recharge. So I'm hoping I can hit this hill over here at just the right angle and we can work our way out of here. It's a little tricky. It doesn't always succeed. It's hard to keep all the wheels in contact with the ground. But the uh, driver assist script helps somewhat with that. It's constantly adjusting the power and the friction and the suspension height and all that good stuff. Here we go. We made it. And as you can see, there's the Great Divide. We've got a, a wall of space pirate bases between here and there, but that's all right. Oh, I need to rotate my ladder up out of the way. Hold on just a second. Let's put that. We can stack that over on this screen. That should be fine. So I look for the rotor. I want this one. And I just need a reverse. So if I hit reverse, see it tucking the ladder away. There we go. I want another group on here. I think it's going to be these three. And I'm going to set up to uh, closed. So I can just make sure they're all closed. I think they're all closed. Okay, here we go. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Looks pretty epic from up here. Should probably go on a little more of a uh, easy path here. Kind of like driving a aircraft carrier on the land. Should have set my turrets up too. I'm gonna set my turrets up. Just start labeling everything with MB for mobile base. Then we're going to come over here to turrets MB and we'll toggle them on off. There we go. I don't want them firing at the bases over here if we get, we shouldn't get close enough, but just in case. 
We're going to just cruise on by. Our antenna is off. I know I've had several comments about the antenna range, and I do keep that quite low. Usually no more than a kilometer. Uh, probably, f I think it's at 500 meters on the small rover. Just enough that I can get some ore signal if I need to. So I don't want the... Ooh, that's the problem with a thousand ton machine. Doesn't look like you're doing much, and you can really be doing a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't have a build and repair on here, so it's gonna be it's gonna be manual repairs. Don't know what that. Don't see any block damage, which is worrying. I've noticed Space Engineer sometimes it will damage the block a little bit, and then it will just completely destroy whatever's behind the block. It's kind of weird. So we're, we're getting a little close to that uh, ore processing outpost over there, which probably has a missile launcher on it, so not the smartest thing in the world. So we're going to ease on over this way. Unknown signal. Might go get that in the little rover. We get to kind of a flat spot down here. And I could show how that works. Slow down a bit. Also take a look underneath and see what, if anything, we damaged. So it is two kilometers that way. It's a little close to that base, not too bad. So about, let's stop here. And let's deploy the rover. What's making that noise? So I've got buttons on the outside. I've also got buttons, a button panel here. So we're going to open up the hangar doors. We go and we're going to lower it on down. The ladder used to be over there, so I keep wanting to go that way. Oh no, I forgot to rotate the ladder. <laughs> like, I can't see the ladder. Where did it go? I need a button back there to do that. It's all right, we'll use it here. Rotor, reverse thyself. Hopefully that's the right height. Didn't smash the rover into the ground. Yeah, even though that's pretty tall, there's a little bit of a downhill here. I can still jump up and grab it, so that's good. All right, that looks just about perfect. Let's hop in here. And we're going to put the batteries on auto. I'm going to hop in the cab here. We're going to unlock. I'm going to ease for just a hair. Maybe. Oh, that's right. I turned this one off when I was troubleshooting. There we go. Daz wasn't awake. That's why I couldn't drive anywhere. All right, we are detached. So I've got a little button panel right here. We can reverse the piston. It'll head back upstairs. Once it's clear, we'll close the hangar doors. 
Well, I guess I can just leave the hangar doors open. Then I'm going to back out of here. I need some I need some rear view mirrors. I don't think I will fit through there. I've got too much stuff now. So we'll just hope that there's nothing behind me and I can ease out or behind the mothership. There we go. Excellent. Let's go get this unknown signal. So I did some painting, as you can see, on the, the little rover. I wasn't going for red, white, and blue. I just, that's what happened. I put the solar panel on at the last thing and that's kind of an emergency power source. It ended up being red, white, and blue, but yeah, like I said, I'm not the best at designing cool looking stuff, but I'm pretty happy the way this rover turned out. We're going to be about a kilometer or so from that enemy outpost. It is a territory defense station, so we definitely don't want to tangle with that. Are some of my batteries messed up? My power is going all weird. I'll take a look at that when we get stopped over here. Could be some of my batteries are not on auto like they should be. Shouldn't have any power problems. I did it recharge enough that we'd be able to use it. Lock that up. Let's make sure that's off. Walk mode. What's going on with you, battery? You're an auto, you're an auto, and you're an auto. Why are you giving me power issues? Huh. Not sure what's up with that. What you got for me? Some space box, cucumbers, eight motors, not bad. Some carrots. Button on the bottom. Uh, rainbow boots. Yeah, we'll grind her up. We got this level two grinder. It's probably quicker to grind it up by hand than just to have the rover do it. Kinds of weird noises. Right, I'll dump that in the cockpit. Binary is. On. I'm just going to turn that off. Maybe that's why I was having power problems. The batteries are pretty low because, like I said, the mothership drained them. Wow, yeah, we're, we're really low on power. Not great. Get that turned off. <laughs> you guys might have to get out and push. Yeah, we'll make it back. All right, anybody seen a giant mobile base around here? There it is. I see it off in the fog. To make sure this thing gets a good charge in it. It can charge up on the trip down. Mobile base has got plenty of power. I think the batteries on it were maybe almost half full. So that's the way I designed the system. That seems to work pretty well. You deploy the little scout and go do stuff. Whoa! All right, back under the 
mothership we go. We want to pull up about there, maybe. See if that got us enough clearance. Nope, we need to pull up a little more. Uh-oh. Oh, was I only getting power from the solar panel? Rut row. <laughs> wow. It, uh, it really did drain the power. All right. Well, I'll have to get this charged up a little bit so I can get it moved forward. Man, if I just pulled up another two meters, would have had it. But uh, that's going to be it for this episode. Next episode, we'll probably get started on uh, taking a look at how we're going to build the bridge. Uh, the design of the bridge and then uh, get started on building the bridge across the Great Divide should hopefully be an uneventful rest of the trip down there once we get past this line of outposts there's not much around as far as I remember oh there's a new one military installation okay well we'll see how that goes but anyway thanks as always for hanging out and I will catch you in the next one take care